الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صبغة الله ومن أحسن من الله صبغة ونحن له عابدون صدق الله العظيم Now this ayah of the Qur'an that we have been taking as our theme ayah from last couple months or two, or two, two and a half months this ayah it's getting very close to the time of Ramadan where you are and I am in a very pure form to live our life in accordance with this ayah this ayah talks about the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which way is better than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed the believers are those who say that yes we have submitted in the month of Ramadan that is coming in a couple weeks that is the time that we really really truly have an opportunity of closing ourselves out from a lot of the worldly affairs that we have to worry about and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ayah in the Quran that talks about the month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we have given you this month and the idea behind is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so that you can come near us you can leave the bad ways and adopt the good ways and come through the route of taqwa the obedience the God consciousness so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to provide us inshallah with some kind of an academy of boot camp 29-30 days where we get to witness and live a life a little bit different than our norm however a way which is will going to make us inshallah closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the hours of the fasting especially in the summer time are not easy the more north you go the longer the fast gets so for example typically our fast would be let's say from 4 in the morning starting out 8ish then slowly and gradually we're going to go past 8 more and more and we're going to come down from 4 to 3:30 so over the period of month you will probably would have had your fast stretched by almost an hour now think about it like this, you still have like 10 some days to plan how exactly will you going to fit your life in Ramadan. Because your sleep cycle will be different, your eating habits will be different, your going to gym cycle may be different, your workouts may be different, there are going to be extra ibadah, all of those little things and you have to be pretty confident about doing your prayers in time you have to make sure that you are in the habits of leaving some of the bad things back which could ruin up your fast so the idea is to live the life of the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we'll talk inshallah more about it but right now I would like to continue from where we last left off which is ayah number 229 of surah al-baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about two words by which you and I live our life. And if anybody who doesn't live their life by these two words is certainly sinning. What are these two words? Hududullah. The boundaries set for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ramadan is a month in which you can relive those boundaries again. At the center, at the core, not walking closer to the fence, rather more in line with the core. So hududullah, the boundary is set for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا Do not cross this. It may look nice to you that the other side is greener, but in fact it's not. There's so much glitter and attraction. It may look to you like it's a water, but it's actually miraj. It may look to you, it's beautiful. It's zina to dunya. But indeed it would stuck you up like a black hole. 
So be careful. Hududullah. Do not go on the other side. فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا And then, وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ And anybody who crosses over and goes on the other side, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِبُونَ They are the one who are unjust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use the word kafir, mushrik, fasiq, fajir. Didn't use munafiq, didn't use any of that. Say, these are the people who are unjust. Because all of these categories that I've mentioned, these categories are created because you're unjust. When you don't do justice to yourself, as an output of that injustice, these categories are formed. Or a sinner is injustice. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a very beautiful dua in the Quran that Adam alayhi salam's dua, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we were unjust to ourselves because we didn't follow the orders in the Jannah. Even though we talked about in very detail that Adam alayhi salam did not follow the orders out of sheer love. Because the shaitan told him that if you eat from this tree, you will live here forever. And on top of that, وَقَسَمَهُمَا And he took oath by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said that I am your well-wisher. Adam did not knew in heaven that there is something called lying. He trusted this guy. Because he took an oath on the deity that he loves the most, which is Allah. And he said, oh, by a God? Of course. Who can lie on God? So he trusted him. He believed in him. So it was out of pure love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he did not want to lose the sight of Allah. He ate from it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded him, Did I not ask you? Did not I tell you not to do this? And he said, Oh, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have done injustice to ourselves. If you will not forgive us, where are we going to go? And these words were taught to Adam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِن رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him these words. So these are the people who when they break the grounds, cross over the fence, then they break the law. And when they break the law, they have sinned. On the nature of the law that they break, they may fall in these categories that they may be hypocrites, they may be non-believers, they may be the one who associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the one who sinned openly, they are the one who continuously break the laws. Is it a one-time sin? Is it the bigger sin or small sin? But all of these categories are the categories of zulm. Injustice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, moving on to ayah number 231 says, Do not make fun of the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now somebody would say, well, who makes fun? How can somebody in their right mind make fun of these ayahs? Well, there are non-believers Disbelievers, hypocrites, that's one category. The other category from the believers is who want to play with these ayahs and want to mold them to their own will. They're doing, I call them fatwa shoppers. It's like you go out there, you go to one shop, you can't find the right price, you go to the next shop, you can't find the right price, you go to the third shop. These guys are constantly looking for some guy who is going to give them fatwa or going to make their life easier. They're not looking for right or wrong. They're looking for what can make my life easy. So these are the people who are following their nafs. They're not looking for truth. So in 
directly, they are making fun of these ayahs because they know what they mean. They just want to find some kind of a way to break this. So, وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا آيَاتِ اللَّهِ هُزْوَى And then what you should do, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ In fact, what you should be doing, you should be thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that He gives you. Now, for a moment, when these kind of ayahs hit me, is a flashback. I say, okay, when I was a kid, growing up, what kind of a house I had? What kind of a lifestyle I had? And now, many years down the road, where do I live? What kind of a house style do I have? What resources I could pull in as a kid? And what resources I could pull in now? I'm like, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. If any one of you have a chance of sitting down with the generation above who did not grow up in this country, on the soil, be it your grandfather, be it your father, sit with them and say, what was your life like when you were a kid? Did you have three times of meal? Can you drink milk whenever you felt like you could open the fridge and pour the milk out? Or everybody was only allowed half a glass of milk a day because that's all they could afford or less. Could you eat however much sugar you liked or everything was budgeted? How often did you go to bakery once a month or once a year at the Eid time? Did you have any money that you could go out and do shopping? How many toys did you have? Would you only get toys at eight time? How many uniforms did you have to school? One or two pairs would be the answer in most cases. As one is getting washed, the other one is where you're wearing to school. Or in some case, one uniform which gets washed maybe weekly because it didn't even have water. And look at us now. Same person, lifespan. It's not talking about two generation in some cases. The problem is we forget where we come from and we are only longing for what is in front of us. As a result, we do not think. Now, now did your grandfather, or you can ask your dad, did your father, how did he go to work? That will tell you a lot. Now some of them didn't even have bicycle to go to work. Forget about a bike. Forget about a car. How did you go to school? Oh, he walked. Your parents didn't drop you off? Because there was, we didn't have anything to drop us off. Really? How did you get, dad got around? Well, he used to walk. Or would take a public transportation. If they were in city, if they're out in rural, they didn't have much choice. Because not everybody would even have a horse or a carriage. So life was very different. I'm talking about in the last hundred years, we're not talking about ooh, way back. No, after World War II, this modern era that we talk about, the life was like that and those people are around us in this community. It would be Unbelievable, I, I sat with this old man and he said, you know, we wearing socks was luxury. Wearing socks was a luxury. A lot of the people would be wearing their boots without socks. SubhanAllah. Back in 50s, not too long ago. 60s. So Alhamdulillah, we're not thankful. The problem is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ The best of the best benefit that you have is you are a believer. Your heart had accepted a message that is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have been given a book of guidance. You have been given a book which tells you right from wrong. 
And then once you have received the message, وَاتَّقُوا Be God conscious. Do not make wrong decisions purposely. Make good decisions. وَعَلَمُوا And know behind your head, on the top of your head, at the back of your mind, know وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Everything. What you hide, what you think, what you do, what you say, what you type, what you put in that draft email that you were about to send but you never send. That nobody else knows but you know because it's in the draft. Even that email that you deleted from the draft. You cannot hide from him. Because إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ sudur, He knows what is in the core of your heart. You know, I happen to run into these psychologists at times. The professors who work in different departments say, you know, we work with a lot of people, so many people that just by they sitting in front of us, we can do a lot of reading on them. Their physical behaviors tells a lot about them. The people who specialize in human sciences or human behavioral sciences, the people who deal with people, they learn to read people. You know, the teachers who have taught for a long time, they look at the behavior of a kid and they can figure out what this kid will do or has been doing or is doing. Lying or truthful. Sometimes they let go, sometimes they don't. But over the period of time, through experience, you learn about humans. So he's God. He's Allah. The one who created you wouldn't know. So where can we hide? There is no place to hide. There is only one way out, and what is that? It's called repentance. Seek forgiveness. إِنَّهُ غَفُورُ إِنَّهُ رَحِيمُ He will forgive you because he is the one who tells us لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much can you sin? In one of the hadith, it says that if you have sinned so much that if you stack up your sins and it would reach the sky, Come to me, I will forgive them. Wala ubali. It's nothing for me. If you have sinned so much that if you spread it out, you can fill the whole face of the planet Earth. Come to me, I will forgive you. Wala ubali. But come to me. This first step has to be taken by us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive, has always been willing to forgive. But are we the one who want to seek the forgiveness? So what taqullah? We got to work on ourselves and be God conscious. And then, If you forget in the matter of forgiveness to others, that will going to make you more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one is forgiving yourself and the other one is forgiving others. Now these two things are very difficult. Why? I'll tell you. Forgiving others who have caused you harm is very difficult to forgive. Forgiving others who have caused harm to the people you love is also very difficult to forgive. And after you have sinned and realized that you have sinned, Sometimes it is hard to let go and forgive yourself. Even after seeking forgiveness, people come and say, I don't know. I said, well, look at it like this. You have been sinning in this capacity for how many years? He said, for many years. He said, okay, for all of these years, did it ever occur to you that you should seek repentance? And no. He said, now it occurred to you? He said, yes. Okay, how did it occur to you? Was it by your will or was it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
I said, of course, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next question is, why did he do that? Because he wants to forgive you. But he wants you to take that first step. Because he wants to forgive you, that's why he put it in your heart, seek forgiveness. This is wrong. This is wrong. Stop it. Because he wants to forgive you. So when he wants to forgive you, why don't you forgive yourself too? After you have seek forgiveness and you are not repeating that mistake again. So these are the things which are a little harder. That's why if you look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, what did the brothers do? They went to both parties that they heard it. They went to Yusuf and said, Yusuf, forgive us, we were wrong. And they went to the father, Jacob, Yaqub alayhi salam and said, Father, forgive us, we erred out. And the dad said, Okay, I will seek, I will seek forgiveness for you in my nightly prayers. Because you did more harm to Joseph than me, I will going to look for that beautiful time when I am connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that nightly prayer to ask forgiveness for your hideous crime that you committed that spoiled the life of two people and a family. But when they went to Joseph, since the act was committed against Joseph, he right away forgave them. He said, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم Not just there, I forgive you. Nobody will even mention this after this day that you did this to me. It's forgotten. As if you never did it. So, وَأَنْ تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Do not forget being nice to each other. Don't forget that Allah has given you rahma in your heart. Don't let it be hard that you are not being nice to each other. Each other means everybody. Not just believers, all beings. You shouldn't be even mean to animals. <coughs> or trees, or plants, or flowers. They're living beings. At the same time, you shouldn't be mean to other fellow beings. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah is watching what you're doing. It's not like on the Day of Judgment you'll come up with some lame excuse. He's watching. But sometimes He puts His hands on you and grabs you. And puts you into a situation where you get shaken up. Sometimes you let go. That in, sh- in hope that you will going to come back. That maybe one day. Maybe one day you will realize and come back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this beauty in this faith. The idea is to go and take this beauty and fill our hearts with this beauty and this month insha'Allah ta'ala that is awaiting us and we are awaiting it the month of Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a beautiful program for all of us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us enough strength and taqwa to make the best out of this month aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'iril muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim